In this video, you will learn how to create an STL file that can be 3D printed, create an additive manufacturing setup in the manufacturer workspace, adjust infills and supports, export a 3D manufacturing format, a .3MF or a .g code file that can be sent to a 3D printer. I want to start by introducing two methods that you can use to create a file that can be sent to a 3D printer. When sending a file to a 3D printer, you can simply create an STL file. To do so, open the file. If you want to create an STL file for the entire assembly, in the browser, right-click on the top-level file name and click Save as STL. If you want to create an STL file of a component, in the browser, right-click on the component's name and click Save as STL. In the dialog box, then you can change the refinement. The refinement is the number of triangles that are going to be applied to the model. If you want to control the infill and supports for the file that will be sent to the 3D printer, open the file, make the manufacturer workspace active. Then you're going to create an additive setup, select the 3D printer, adjust the infill, and modify the supports, and simulate the 3D print to make sure everything looks good. And then you can export a .3MF file, which stands for a 3D manufacturing format, or you can export a .g code file. If you need to create toolpaths for a CNC machine, a lathe, or a laser cutter, you can also create these inside of Fusion 360's manufacturer workspace. These topics won't be covered in this video, but we will add a link to additional resources that will cover these topics. Now inside of Fusion 360, let's go through the two methods to create a file that can be sent to your 3D printer. To start off with, if I want to create an STL file of an assembly, I'm just going to come up here in the browser and right click on the top level file name. And from the menu, click on Save as STL. If you only want to create an STL file of an individual component, right click on it. And again, from the menu, I'm going to click on Save as STL. In the dialog box, you can adjust the refinement. The refinement controls how many triangles will be placed on your component. The higher the number of triangles, the smoother the 3D print will look. To create the STL file, click OK, and then give the file a name. The next method that I'm going to go through is optional. You only need to do this method if you want to control the infills and the supports. For the next method, I'm going to go under the design dropdown, and then I'm going to click on manufacture. Now in the manufacture workspace, I'm going to create a new setup by clicking setup in the setup menu. The first thing I want to do is confirm the operation type. In the dialog box, I'm going to click under the dropdown arrow. As I mentioned in the introduction, here's where you can create a setup for milling, turning, cutting, cutting think laser cutter, or in our case here, we're just going to keep it as additive. The next thing I want to do is define the machine. So at the top of the dialog box in the machine area, click on select. In the machine library dialog box, I'm going to expand the Fusion 360 library. Then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to select Ultimaker. And the machine that I want, I'm going to select the Ultimaker 2. You can either double click on the file or once the file is selected, click on select. At the bottom of the dialog box, you can see that the three bodies will be included in this setup. Since I only want to print the bracket, I'll clear the selection set by clicking on the X, and then clicking on the bracket. I'm going to finish this operation by clicking on OK. After selecting the bracket, it was automatically moved onto the middle of the platform. Now I no longer need to see the pin in the clevis. To turn their visibility off, I'm going to go into the browser and expand Models, and then expand the assembly. And I'm just going to turn off the visibility for the pin and the clevis. If your 3D printer is not in the list, you can add it by going under the Manage menu and click on Machine Library. To add a 3D printer to your library, you can create a new printer from scratch or find a printer that is close to yours and copy it into your library and then edit the properties of the copied printer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on XYZ Printing. From the list, I see a machine that is close to mine. So I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to do so by right clicking on it and click Copy. And then in the menu, I'm going to scroll up and then I'm going to click under My Machines Cloud. Machines that are kept in your library are the machines that you can edit. So next, I'm going to right click and click Paste then modify the machine as required. So here you can see what's under Information, Dimensions, Limits, the Extruder Configuration and the Post Processor. And when you're done, go ahead, click OK. Then you can use this machine in your setup. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and close the dialog box. 
and I'm going to zoom up into my bracket. Now in the menu, you can move the model as required. You can change the printer settings. The option that I want to change now is going to be infill. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the infill tool. Then in the dialog box, I'm going to change the pattern to honeycomb. And then I'm going to adjust the infill to be 50%. And of course, you can make additional changes as required. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Next, I want to look at the support. So I'm going to go under the supports menu and click on the supports tool. And again, in the dialog box, you can make changes as required. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Next, I'll calculate the operations by clicking on the Generate tool found on the Actions menu. Next, I'll start the simulation. To speed the simulation, you can also click and drag on the arrow and pull it up. Here, you can see the infills. As I pull this higher, you can see that the cyan areas, those are going to be my supports. When you're done with the simulation, click Cancel. The last step is to export a file that you can send to your 3D printer. Depending on your 3D printer, you can export either a 3MF file or a G-code file. To export a 3MF file, go under the Actions menu and click on Export as 3MF. And in the dialog box, make changes as needed. And then go ahead, click OK, and the file will be created. To create a G-code file, go under the Actions menu and click on Post Process. Then in the dialog box, specify which post should be used to create this file. As you can see from the list, there are many to choose from. Then you can specify where the file will be created. And when you're ready, go ahead and click on Post. Both of these files contain all the data you need to 3D print the file. And this completes this video on additive manufacturing, 3D printing inside of Fusion 360. Thanks for watching.